Good mythical afternoons. This is Mr. Ayala with another vlog for you. We're going to look at a little bit of abolitions and women's rights movements in the 1800s, specifically the women's rights movement and how the abolition movement worked with them. So as always, please make sure that you're writing down whatever you need and that you're viewing this as often as you need to to be successful on the next test. So the first thing we need to look at are our objectives or the things that we need to ponder. So you should be able to identify the people of the women's movements and their contributions. You should also be able to explain how the women's movement and abolition movements are similar. So what do they want to both do? So when we left off, we were talking about how women reformers begin to face barriers. So the first one is Elizabeth Cady Stanton. So she wanted to actually join the World Anti-Slavery Convention in London, but she was not allowed to speak because she was a woman. They more or less went, hey, you're a woman. We're going to hide you behind this curtain because we don't want the men to look at you because you have no right to speak in this uh, conversation. So she gets really kind of ticked off about this. So she started looking through what rights did women actually have. And she noticed that women had very few legal or political rights in the 1800s. All they could do is own land or have a job. That's it. And as soon as they get married, all their land, all their money is now their, their husbands. Even if they get a divorce. And that was a major issue. So women began, started to decide that it was finally time to begin to fight for women's rights. The idea that women should be equal under the eyes of law, both for political and um, legal rights. So we get to what's known as the Seneca Falls Convention. So we have two people called Elizabeth Kenton Stanton and Lucretia Mott who hold this convention at Seneca Falls, uh, New York on July 19th and 20th of 1848. And when they got there, there was mostly women, a few men, and they were there to fight for women's rights. So they write what they call um, the Declaration of Rights and Sentiments, which is mirrored off the Declaration of Independence. More or less what they do is they write how all men and women should have equal rights. And they all will fight for this idea known as suffrage, or as we say, the right to vote. So some men and newspapers actually begin to make fun of this group because why should women want to have equality with men? And their perspective is women don't need the right to vote. They control the household. They don't need to have equality. Look at them. They just stay home and they take care of their kids. And isn't that wonderful? And a lot of women did not like that idea. They thought that was um, not good. No bueno. So... From there, we get uh, continued calls for women's rights movements after Seneca Falls. So we get Sojourner Truth, uh, who we talked about during the abolition movements, and she wants to attach the abolition of slavery with the women's rights, saying that they both have the same idea. They both want to make it so that those without political rights could have some. So from there, we get a lady named Susan B. Anthony. She was a skilled organizer who worked both in the temperance and the women's movement. So the temperance movement is that idea of making alcohol illegal because at this time, about 85 to 95% of men drank alcohol a lot. And they were drunk all the time, spending all their money so their kids and their families didn't get what they needed. And so she really, really helps the states actually pass property laws for women so that w all women could actually own land in all the states because only the more progressive states states like pennsylvania allowed them to actually have land at this time so we get to the grimke sisters so the grimke sisters are daughters of a, of a very large uh slave uh, large plantation owner down in the south uh, and when they went up north they actually met the quakers and as they went up there they found out they started fighting for the abolition of slavery because they saw what their father did um, to their... Sorry about that jump cut. Anyway, so they, they saw how their father treated slaves and they looked at the ideas that were put forth through the Quakers and their ideas of tolerance towards all. And they thought that was just ridiculous that just because they were of a different race that they were enslaved and that that was just a totally against the Bible. So if you remember the second great awakening, that idea that we actually can choose what we want. We can actually choose how to change society and make the best decision for ourselves. And they really take that idea and ran with it. 
And as they started spreading around their ideas, they became what we call feminist icons because of their lectures on slavery and the role of women in the reform movements. Because they were like, women should have the right to help reform the world. Because they would go and try to talk or, or publish newspapers or pamphlets. And what would end up occurring is they would just get yelled and screamed at just because they're women. Not, not actually what they're saying about abolitionists or getting rid of slavery, but just because of their gender. And they get really kind of upset about this idea, about this background. So we, when we really look at the women's rights movement and abolition is that they both want to give rights to those who are denied legal and political rights in the United States. Uh, they wanted to free or emancipate the uh, slaves. They wanted to give all African-American men the right to vote and all women the right to vote because they're like, it doesn't matter if they're different genders or they're a different race. They should have the right to express their opinions. Unfortunately for women, they actually did not win any rights until the 20th century with the passing of the um, 20th Amendment. And then you had African-Americans would be freed with uh, the 13th Amendment, 1865, and also get the right to vote with the 14th Amendment. And as always, don't forget to be awesome.